the first call I had I'll work within five minutes and if I don't the developer will just walk away right so you have to really make it easy uh, up until this point in uh, the public sector most uh, data exchanges use SOAP and XML and uh, from personal experience I know that you won't get your first call in five minutes it will usually take you something like two days <coughs> so you want to change that so what do we need to do this well we develop uh, uh, some personas, so not just uh, a UI for a coding developer, but also, uh, for instance, a product owner that you want to convince to use the APIs when you say something about service level, etc. And we made some recommendations about uh, what you need to do uh, apart from the technical stuff to get APIs to actually be used. And the nice thing about this working group is also that it was not just uh, civil servants in there, but there were people uh, from companies outside the program participating and say, this, uh, these are the kinds of things we need. So then we have the API design rules. Now we get to the very technical part. Uh, so these are uh, uh, rules and principles. Uh, and we made this into uh, a normative standard. Uh, basically, uh, it's uh, general REST principles, naming uh, conventions, uh, how to deal with versioning. Uh, so we make a, a core uh, that's normative. And we also made a non-normative set of extensions. So these are uh, things that are uh, where there's work in progress still to be done or where it's uh, still uh, to use. So they are not applicable to every If you're in uh, geographical information systems, uh, you want to do something about uh, a coordinate reference system and contact negotiations specific to this domain. So we have an extension for that, how to solve this with APIs. Uh, then we have a working group on security. Uh, and we started on a very <coughs> specific topic. Uh, we already had a, a, uh, a standard, uh, what we wanted to have uh, all of two as a mandatory standard within government for authorization. Uh, but uh, there was an expert meeting on this, and they said, well, uh, we won't achieve much interoperability if we just say all of two. It's far too broad, so we need a profile for the best public sector. Uh, so we made a profile on, uh, on this uh, based on uh, the IGOF profile. On Foundation, uh, which we uh, specialize to the situation. Uh, and once this was finished, we started with some other topics. So we looked into signing and encryption uh, and uh, more general authentication uh, and authorization methods within the APIs. And then we have the uh, architecture working group, which is actually led uh, by Peter uh, out there. Um, <coughs> so, uh, of course, APIs will have an impact on your IT architecture, and we wanted to share best practices between our government organizations on uh, what you want to do in your application architecture to uh, facilitate uh, uh, offering APIs to the outside world and to all the problems, uh, government organizations. Um, one working group that's actually missing is uh, when we have our kickoff, we have Envision Tools, we have a working group that will uh, deal with stuff like service level agreements. Uh, legal requirements, etc. Uh, we all thought this was very much necessary, but we also just got two participants, which was not enough to really start a working group. Uh, so this is something we want to uh, try to restart again next year, now that we've progressed a bit with our APS. And actually, the architecture work group, working group was originally not envisioned, but that kick off in the event there were 20 people that raised their hand to say, we want to do something with the architecture. So, well, there's that much enthusiasm. You facilitate this. So, what's our timeline? Um, well, we started in 2018, um, and we have our kickoff uh, well, almost halfway through the year. Um, and we had a public consultation, uh, not by the end of 2018, for our first concept, but by February 2019. Um, and we uh, had uh, quite a few reactions. We have actually, actually an event to uh, kick off this public consultation, which was visited by uh, 120 people, um, uh, which in the Netherlands is a lot within the government sector. Um, well, we uh, incorporated the results of this in July, and then uh, last October, we submitted the API design rules for it, so the technical part as a national standard. So it's now in process of uh, uh, getting formal approval. And if all goes well, it will be done by the middle of next year. Also what we did uh, is, well, we said uh, we wanted to get more formal approval, so we were a grants of initiative, uh, but we uh, had a 
presentation a few weeks ago at the, the highest level of uh, uh, digital government. So there's uh, uh, the digital directorate for the digital government within the Netherlands uh, with representative, uh, representatives of all ministries that do anything uh, that has to do with IT and uh, government. And we presented uh, the API strategy and uh, the general concept <coughs> there and got a very positive reception. So, uh, and follow up actions to also uh, start working bottom down, uh, or top down instead of uh, just bottom up. So that's really nice. So where do we start uh, standing? Implementation. So currently, uh, there are some uh, nice uh, data portals. So for instance, the city of Amsterdam has a nice uh, data portal with uh, quite a few APIs in there. Uh, the Dutch cadastres uh, so are the land registry. They, they have a, a nice uh, geospatial data infrastructure with uh, quite a few uh, APIs. We've just started our uh, developer uh, uh, all right government dot now, so uh, very comparable to what was just presented in front. But well, uh, more of a concept yet. We have 30 APIs in there. Uh, but as you can see, we have no layout or anything. It's just pure functionality. Uh, and uh, another example is uh, an energy company that uh, uh, shares with public data sets uh, using APIs. So uh, when I share these slides, there, they all have links to the actual sites. So um, one of the uh, things uh, and the main reasons we started this is uh, we already have an open data uh, portal, of course, in the Netherlands. But if you start looking for APIs there, there's no way to filter on uh, which data sets are open in APIs. If you do a search of API, there's six data sets returned. And we know there should be many more, but we don't know which ones. So we're now up to around 30 that we know. I'm pretty sure there are more in the country, but we uh, haven't found it. So we want to make more insightful which APIs there are. It's not the ambition to have uh, one portal to rule them all. No, it's more of a uh, 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 refer, uh, refer you to uh, the individual portals uh, after you describe them. Uh, this is a nice API. And based on the square file that's incorporated in the first uh, experiments I did. I like this uh, showing more. Uh, but uh, finding them is uh, surprisingly hard. We thought how hard can it be to find the APIs in government, and it turns out uh, it's hard, or there are just not that many, but it's also the difference. So you say there's <coughs> some of the models that the experiment has adopted, it's not popular, does it work? Uh, well, uh, I think we're not as far along as the French government is. Uh, we have actually a lower bar of entry here. It says anyone can submit an API that he or she knows about uh, to this board. Uh, so uh, if you are offering an API in public sector, it could be your API is in there already and you don't know about it. Uh, and in that way, uh, that way we got to third. I think the French government has a higher bar of entry. They actually have to submit it themselves as an organization if we did that. Probably we would have just five. Uh, so um, I think just just knowing they are out there is hard enough, and then getting people to actually agree really to put it in a central portal is also hard. Because people like their own portals. Well, why should I publish it somewhere else? Uh, but well, from a fine, from a general user point of view, if I just want to know what APIs are out there, in public sector, it is really nice to have a central place where they all can be found. And it could be that at some point we integrate this with our open data uh, portal. Uh, but then again, there are also many APIs that are not just open data, but maybe open functionality or uh, even closed data that you still want to share. And actually, at the moment, uh, among those three, there are quite a few that are not open data, but are useful with uh, the government organizations. And so how far are we along with our standard for the API design rules? Well, actually, there are around 30. You uh, can't read them, but if you uh, so the slides, they are all clickable, so you get uh, to the uh, specification of these. There are already 30 that conform to our API design. So I just told you, I know of uh, roughly uh, uh, the same amount of APIs in government, so this is going well, right? So uh, the API design rules we have uh, are not that complex at the moment. Uh, it's uh, uh, some basic housekeeping, uh, basically, and we have already have quite a few that adhere to these uh, uh, rules. So, we're doing well on the adoption part. So, what do we see as uh, sure? Uh, well, we're still in the pro process of getting formal approval for our uh, first version of the standard. Uh, we started getting the attention of policymakers and top level management, but uh, 
it's just a starting point. I mean, I'm very jealous of my neighbors to the south, where the prime minister of uh, Flanders just two weeks ago gave a speech on APIs. Well, <laughs> I don't see our prime minister doing that just yet, but I would really love it if he did. Um, we want to complete our extensions. Many of them are still a work in progress. Uh, we want to, to go more uh, in the direction of OData, GraphQL, and uh, uh, Google Cool. Mainly focus just on the very basic RESTful APIs at the moment. Um, we want to uh, connect our government IT architecture initiatives. Uh, so we're talking with them already, but uh, we just want to have a, a, a chapter on APIs within uh, the national uh, IT architecture. And perhaps maybe uh, some European cooperation uh, during the next year. So uh, I promised you more, more monkeys. So Here's one. Um, at the uh, uh, kickoff uh, event for our public consultation, we also uh, had a, a prize, uh, the Golden Monkey, so the Golden <laughs> API. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, and you'll see a photograph of the actual statue as well uh, in, uh, in a moment. Uh, so we asked uh, people to nominate, nominate uh, APIs, and we got a short list of 10. Uh, and then we had an independent jury uh, evaluate these. So we had. Uh, a journalist that uh, writes mainly about uh, government and IT, uh, as the uh, main uh, leading jury. Then we had a policymaker in there, and we had uh, an actual developer that tested out all 10 APIs and uh, uh, tested if they worked and would actually uh, get to a first call within five minutes. <laughs> so, who won? Uh, the API for addresses and buildings. Um, and uh, the jury was. Uh, uh, well, they really liked it because it was uh, really easy to use uh, and uh, it really improves the accessibility. Uh, so the model <coughs> for GIS, the uh, uh, information system expert, was for everyone. So uh, via this API, one can easily obtain uh, information on addresses and buildings, and this is very relevant, for instance, for the energy tra transition business, right? So going to uh, uh, well, where are places I can put up uh, solar roofs, for instance. Um, so that was nice, the jury, but uh, then we uh, actually uh, gave the prize away, so uh, here on the right you see the gold <laughs> <laughs> uh, And uh, what uh, Kadaster said when they received the award was, within the first year uh, we had this API in production, we exceeded uh, uh, the number of requests on the API for all other distribution methods over the pre previous seven years combined. <laughs> right? So that's an enormous uptake in usage of their uh, data set. And then six months later, I talked to them again, and they said, we stopped counting. It's just too many. It, it kept on increasing. <laughs> so this really goes to show that uh, uh, just offering uh, data as an open data set is not enough. You really have to make it easy uh, and usable and accessible, and APIs are a great way to do this. <coughs> so online information, uh, if you want uh, more information, uh, Sorry, not everything's in English, but some of it is. Uh, so I have some general information that's in Dutch. Uh, maybe Google Translate will help you there. Uh, we have our main GitHub, which we used uh, to develop uh, our uh, API strategy. Uh, then we have the Dutch profile for all of, uh, which is entirely in English, so that might be uh, helpful for you as well. Uh, then we have the API strategy, which basically contains the chapters on uh, how do we explain this to a manager, uh, users, uh, requirements and architecture. Uh, that's in Dutch. Uh, but then the technical part, the design rules, and the extensions are in English. <coughs> so this is actually what uh, part of the feedback we got from our public consultation. At the beginning of the year, it was still in Dutch. And I actually sent uh, uh, a Dutch version to Lauren Zino, who uh, had the EU translated, which was sort of readable. But uh, something, some things do get lost. And now we have <coughs> an English version. And it's really helpful. But so for instance, as you can see on my laptop, I also work with OGC, so the standards organizations for uh, uh, geographical standards, and uh, there I presented the English version uh, to the architecture board. Uh, and they said, oh, this is nice. We want to do some uh, cool requests from our own API strategy and uh, take over some of your ideas. So that really helped. Um, so now I'm at the end of my slides. <laughs> 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 well, thank you for you.